Kanban Task Manager builds on the idea of the traditional Kanban board, where cards are moved between faces as work proceeds. I'm Peter Kamström of Kamström.com Business Solutions, and in this demo, I'll give an introduction to Kanban Task Manager for SharePoint. Here you see the Kanban Task Manager Kanban board in SharePoint, with a number of tasks for different projects. These are our example data that you can load if you want to evaluate Kanban Task Manager. The task cards can be moved within and between phases and lanes. I'm using the mouse here, but if you have a touch screen, you can move the tasks with a finger. I can resize the Kanban board by pressing the Control key and the plus or minus key. The tasks are color coded by project or responsible, and you can use any colors you like. This red border on the card is a warning that the task has passed its due date. And this line shows how much of the task has been completed. This is the checklist count, which is also a way to show how the task proceeds. Double click on a task to open it in edit mode. Here are the drop downs where the Kanban task manager values can be selected. To create a new task, double click on an empty space in a face. You can also click on the plus sign or hit the control and enter keys. Click on the search icon to search all tasks. A left pane will open, and here you can also filter the tasks by project, responsible, and priority. If you want to share the filtered Kanban view, you can copy the URL here. In the Kanban Task Manager configuration page, you can create a custom parameter to add to the tasks and to filter by. When you enter a name here, a new tab will be displayed where you can enter the values you want to use. I'll just take a quick tour around the rest of the configuration page now because I have explained the settings in detail in a separate demo. Here you can define how the color coding should be used in Kanban Task Manager. The checklist feature makes it easier to work with large tasks, and with the time logging, you can keep track of how much time users spend on their tasks. These two features are enabled by default. Under this tab, you can fill out the projects you want to use. The SharePoint status values are by default used as face names, and the responsible persons are automatically added here when tasks are assigned to different SharePoint users. By default, Kanban Task Manager uses a task list called KTM Tasks, which is created during the installation. If you want to use another list, you can select it here. Under the default values, you can set default values for responsible, start date, due date, project, and priority. I'll not go much into this now, as we have a separate demonstration for the default values. Under this tab, you can add templates for checklists with similar steps. That way, the users can select the template instead of writing a new checklist each time. Under the Hours Open tab, you can define your organization's working days, service hours, and lunch breaks. Based on these factors, Kanban Task Manager will calculate the total hours a task was open. Please refer to the manual for a detailed description and clarifications on how this feature works and calculates time. Each user's open tasks can be embedded in any page in the Kanban Task Manager site. You can embed the code here. Let's go back to the Kanban board now. If you right click on a task, a details pane will open. Here you can read the description, change the progress bar, and mark the task as completed. If enabled in the settings, the checklist and time logging are also found here. This Excel icon is for statistics, but I'll not go into that now as we have a separate demonstration on the Excel reports. Instead, we will take a look at the other views for open tasks. The week view gives an overview of the open tasks for a week. These are the tasks for the current week, and the current day is highlighted in yellow. 
I've set specific hours for this task, so these hours are highlighted here. The month view gives an overview over when tasks are supposed to start and end. These are the tasks of the current month, but I can change month here. The slots are color-coded by project or responsible depending on which option you selected in the settings. You may also have an overview over all tasks during the year, or see tasks on a timeline grouped by responsible or project. Another view grouped by project is the project view, where each project is visualized as a pie chart, and each slice of the pie represents a face. Here you can see how many tasks are open in each project and in which phase they're in. The daily trend view shows the statuses of all tasks from the last 30 days in a line chart representation. Here you can see how many tasks were open, new, and closed each day. The day report shows activities on a specified day. Here you can see the tasks that were created, opened, closed, delayed, and modified on the selected date. The seven habits view displays the open tasks in four quadrants based on their urgency and importance. The two on the left are the tasks that are due today. The high priority tasks are the top and the low or normal priority tasks are at the bottom. Tasks that are not due today are here to the right, the high priority tasks on the top and the low or normal priority tasks at the bottom. The importance and the due date will of course change accordingly when you move the tasks from one quadrant to another. The not assigned view displays the tasks that have not been assigned to any responsible person yet. I can just drag and drop the tasks to assign them. That's it. I'll end my introduction now, but you're welcome to learn more about Kanban Task Manager on the Kalmstrom.com website. Thank you for watching this demo.